Okay, welcome to the Dave Nordahl Show, first episode. Uh, this is going to be a podcast, and uh, I'm going to basically wait uh, a couple of minutes for everyone to get in before we get into all of this. Uh, basically, the uh, the flow of the show is going to go, uh, I'm going to have, I got a couple of news stories. And then we're going to jump right into uh, Kyle Kalinske. So, um, yeah. Um, and I think that, that'll work. Um, so, yeah. Uh, I'm going to give everyone just a couple of minutes to uh, kind of fill in. Uh, if you guys got any questions for me, uh, we got a couple of minutes before I officially start the show. Uh, this will be available on, I believe, iTunes and on Podbean under the same name. So, hope to see you there. This will be a podcast available for later downloads, or if you watch it on here, you can certainly just see the show live. Like I said, we got a couple of uh, we got a couple of news stories. Then the rest of the show is going to be. Um, uh, me making fun of Kyle Kalinske. I did hear that. I'm going to talk about that, uh, Hammerhead. Uh, while I'm on the show, uh, you won't be able to ans- ask me questions. After the show, depending on what the chat looks like, I may have a small Q&A after that. Um, so, all right. And five, four, three, two... Welcome to the inaugural episode of the Dave Nordahl Show. We got a couple of news story, and then we're going to make fun of the pompous ass known as Kyle Kalinske. All right, first story up today. Bill Maher is once again in hot water from the left. Is it any wonder why the left is losing so much support and is so goddamn fractured? Anyway, he's in hot water for saying the Tara Reid sexual assault allegation against Joe Biden is ridiculous. Now, I've made my feelings on this known. I think it's a little ridiculous that you never brought this up. It's a 30-year-old allegation. Um, outside of your good word. And the whole hashtag, believe women. What the fuck do you want us to do? You have no physical evidence. You have no, you have no evidence to corroborate your story. I know feminists hate this, but we work on the assumption of innocence. Um, I mean, the biggest thing Democrats should be worrying about is Biden's rapidly deteriorating mental state. And if Trump can get that motherfucker on a debate stage, it's over. Um, okay, uh, this is what this uh, person writes. It's Marlo Stern. Another Friday means yet another edition of Real Time with Bill Maher, the late night program of choice for the likes of Milo Yiannopoulos, Steve Bannon, and other alt-right fascism-friendly trolls. Maher had on Milo once before his career was destroyed. And Steve Bannon, I think he's had on once, maybe twice. But, you know, Steve Bannon founded a lot of left-wing publications. You do know that, dear jackass writer of this article. And I wouldn't call either one of them alt-right, nor would I call them fascism-friendly. You see, the left is far closer to the definition of fascism than anyone on the right. Because part of fascism is using violence and intimidation to get your political way. Now, does that sound more like the Proud Boys or more like Antifa? I was curious to see if Marr, who prides himself on being politically incorrect, would address former Senate aide Tara Reid's allegation of sexual assault against Biden, the presumptive Democratic nominee for president, given that the comedy host has made a field day of mocking Trump's disgusting treatment of women. Uh, He once said Trump making sexual assault great again. Yeah, and I made fun of Bill Maher for that because it was bullshit. Trump clearly said, they let you grab them by the pussy. Well, if you let me do something, then that's on you. You gave me permission. 
And Biden has, after many days of silence, been making the media rounds to address and deny the claim, including a stop at Morning Joe. Marr mostly declined, instead opting uh, for a more lighthearted bit on Biden called 20 thing, 24 Things You Don't Know About Me. In it, Marr cracked, I was asked to social distance even before the virus, besides a creepy photo of Biden massaging a woman's photos. Yes, Biden does creepy things. Does Biden maybe take the touchy-feely shit a little too far? Sure, I can agree with that, but that isn't rape. That isn't even sexual assault. See, one of the great lies of feminism is they say one in four women are raped. No, they're not, because to get the stat that high, they had to throw in things like forced kissing. Now, is forced kissing wrong? Yeah, no problem. But does it rise to the level of rape? Certainly not. Uh, my first idea for Cam Slagan, campaign slogan was, I'm on her. He closed with a bit with, you think I'm in cognitive decline, you should see the other guy. Over an hour of jokes, including interviews with Matt Taibbi, Eric Holder, Brett Steffens, quotation mark, Ugh, I don't even know who the fuck Brett Steffens is, but I'm sure he's, if he's anyone to the right of Lenin, this guy hates him. And a pair of monologues, Mar late. All of his colleagues in Late Night Mar only addressed the allegation against Biden once in a question to Holder saying he thought it was ridiculous that it would go away and no one would pay attention to it before asking Holder what his thoughts are on it. Mar also questioned how appropriate it was to even be discussing the Reid allegation against Biden given the state of America with COVID-19 going on. Here's the problem. You guys haven't shut the fuck up about Trump for three years, yet no credible accusation has ever come against Trump. And weren't you singing a different fucking tune, Mar, when it was Brett Kavanaugh and about the same amount of evidence was leveled against him, but yet you said he was a dirty fucking rapist? Sorry, Mar, you gotta have a standard. I have a standard. It's called, um, you know, unless your claim has some proof, I'm sorry, we work until, you know, we you have to prove them guilty. They don't have to prove their innocence. Okay? I know feminists hate this, but nobody has to prove their innocence. You have to prove their guilt. That is my... That is my stance. It's the same for Biden as it it was for Kavanaugh. And it's the same for Trump as it would be for anyone else. Um, Anything more on this? If comedy pundits on the left are going to rip the Trumps off the world for alleged predatory behavior toward women, they should also take aim at those in their own party, lest they be rank hypocrites. Believe it or not, I actually tend to side with this gentleman's opinion. Then again, Mar is a pretty spotty, uh, but then again, I tend to think he's going to try to rip Mar as being right wing. Uh, has a pretty spotty track record when it comes to Me Too allegations against those on the left, having recently launched into a wildly misogynistic defense of his pal Chris Matthews. Oh my God, could it maybe be the allegations are bullshit? You see, the problem with the hashtag believe women, hashtag Me Too, hashtag what the fuck ever else, is it's predicated on a completely stupid notion that women are incapable of lying okay and last i checked i actually agreed with feminism's point that women are people too so therefore incapable of lying if you say this guy raped you okay what's your proof what's your evidence whether i believe you or not is irrelevant Um, anyway, he resigned following the allegations of sexual harassment. And when a number of women came forward last April, April, not a number of women, one. And again, why didn't she bring this up during his other, many other Senate campaigns? Remember, this allegation is like 30 fucking years old. Why was she silent all those Senate campaigns? Or when Obama picked him to be his VP pick? Or when Obama got reelected. Just not a word. So I'm sorry, but you're bringing this up now because you know goddamn well he can't beat Trump. And I'd be very curious to see her voting record. 
Why do I think she's a Bernie Sanders supporter? Now you bring it up. Well, I'm sorry. If you're waiting 30 years to bring it up, then obviously it was good for you. Must have done a good job. Uh, anyway, uh, you, we're getting a little nitpicky. I mean, of course, no one likes to be touched unwantedly, and women get a lot more of that than men. But the first person who brought this up and said he made her feel gross and uneasy. You know what makes me feel gross and uneasy? A second Trump term. Well, Bill, you better get ready for it, because Biden's not going to beat Trump. It's just not going to happen. And men get touched just as much as women. And actually, women can get away with it a lot easier, because if men say anything, yeah, they get called sissy, faggot, and a bunch of other things. Okay, that ends this story. Now, the main story of the day that doesn't involve me making fun of that little twerp, Kyle Kalinske, is the U.S. women's national soccer team has basically had their lawsuit kicked out. Now, I'm going to summarize why. The collective bargaining agreement they all signed, remember, women are adult females, The collective bargaining agreement they all signed basically stipulated lower pay so they could have more people on the team. And actually, as a proportion of the income they bring in, they get a bigger percentage of the cut than the men. Because I I hate to bring this up, ladies. Well, I'm going to save that. But there's a big reason why women don't get paid shit in sports. Judge Gary Klausner ruled that the U.S. WNT's claim of unequal pay in relation to their male counterparts did not warrant a trial. They sued the USSF, seeking as much as $67 million in back pay, arguing that the USMNT was paid more because of gender discrimination. No, the reason they're paid more is people go to see them play. No one gives a rat's ass about women's athletics. If it wasn't for the WNBA some reason keeping the the uh or the it, if it wasn't for the NBA for some reason keeping the WNBA alive, the WNBA would have been dead in 94. Okay? They wouldn't have survived one fucking season. Women's FIFA and women's soccer bring in a fucking tenth, a tenth if that of what the men bring in. Sorry, nobody gives a shit about women's athletics. Sorry, ladies, you're always going to be second best in this arena. There's two exceptions. One is the UFC, but I don't know how many women can draw pay-per-view numbers by themselves. Like, if they're the only premier fight on that damn card, I think the numbers are going to be down. Because in wrestling, women don't draw. Pretty much everybody was leaving when it was the women's main event. The women team spokesperson, Molly Levinson, vowed to immediately appeal the ruling. Members of the team that won the Women's World Cup last year immediately backed up the claim on Twitter, including Golden Ball and Golden Boot winner Megan Rapone. We will never stop fighting for equality. No, you signed a contract. This is why the case was thrown out of court. You signed a contract for less money because you wanted more motherfuckers on the team. And again, nobody gives a fuck about it. If the WNBA folded tomorrow, no one would fucking care. Nobody would give a shit. The news was disappointing to U.S. WNT star Alex Morgan. I don't know who the fuck that is. Nor do I give a shit. Although disappointing to hear this news, this will not discourage us in our fight for equality. Yeah, there's just one problem. The reason men get paid more in sports is they bring in most of the bucks. It's like, take take college sports, for example. 
you have every sport under the sun has a team in college. Do you know what one sport pays in general? There's always exceptions to uh, like a local college. But do you know what one sport pays for everything? And that's football. That's why the football team gets most of the bucks to spend because they bring in all the goddamn revenue. The high school or the college, the NCAA fencing team ain't bringing in shit because nobody gives a fuck about it. The only other sport that runs slightly in the black is basketball, but and and that's only because of March Madness. Every other sport, except for a few, like I know the U of M, the Gophers do really well, uh, you know, and, and outside of a local market, every other fucking team, every other team in a college makes no money at all. Nobody cares. Um, you know, same thing as college baseball. It exists. Nobody's going to the games because they're going to minor league games. I mean, same thing as, same thing, take a look at this, ladies. Should a single A baseball player get paid as much as a major leaguer? No, of course not. You know why? The single A guy is lucky if 300 people show up to his game. Meanwhile, the major leaguer is playing in in front of fucking what, 40,000 people? And uh, forward Tobin Heath also vowed to keep hiding. The team never gives up. We're not going to start now. Becky Sonderman, blah, blah, blah. I have a lot of fight left in me. We will continue the fight for equal pay, says Kristen Pess. Uh, the player's social media statement mirrored Labinson's own view. We are shocked and disappointed with today's decisions. We will not give up our hard work for equal pay. Oh, my God. Nobody cares. You signed a contract. Uh, The judge also ruled against the claim that the USMNT was treated more favorably in terms of field conditions. Yes, they bring in the money. Once again, take college. The football team could kick the lacrosse team off because nobody gives a fuck about lacrosse. The only thing making that college money is the football team. They also argued the men unfairly receive more favorable travel conditions and support services. So that's still on track for a trial. Where are they putting you? Where, 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 like what? The men get to stay at the four star plaza in New York while you guys get shitty, shitty ass uh, Rufus McGee's hotel with cockroaches the size of coyotes. Anyway, it's ridiculous. Men make all the money. You guys make none or very little. That's why they get paid more. But the reason this suit was dropped was a contract they signed. Sorry, ladies. You're adults. Deal with the consequences of your actions. Or maybe deal with the fact that, well, you guys just suck. Sorry. In the world of athletics... Men are, women are never going to be able to outdraw men. I'll take that back. There might be one exception, and that's tennis, but I think women's tennis typically draws way less than men. I don't know because I find tennis incredibly boring. All right, uh, now let's make fun of Mr. Kyle Kalinsky. Now, this video is entitled, uh, Pelosi Incapable of Answering Question About Poverty and to Societies. Now, if you're listening to the audio version of this, I do apologize, but you don't really need to see much of Kyle Kalinske's visuals. If he does have something, I'll describe it to you. But check out YouTube.com slash Lord of Patriarchy and look me up and you can check this show live with the video feed. All right. Let's get into this. Nancy Pelosi was asked a surprisingly good question on CNBC about the growing wealth and income divide in the U.S. And her answer was right on brand. I listened to some to the changes that you're talking about, telemedicine, 
uh, studying at home, I think, okay, we're in a world where people who are wealthy, people who have jobs, contracts, they can stay at home. Okay, now I'm going to be very curious as to how Kyle responds to this because, quite frankly, Kyle, you're in her world. I see another world. I see the possibility of two societies developing. Society has to be out there every day, in the masses, subways, risking themselves. And then this other group of people who are safe at home with all sorts of computers, very rich, a society that is not what you and I want to see. How do we prevent that? Well, let us do it all together. This is a moment of truth for our... And before she gets into this, I'm actually maybe going to have to defend Nancy Pelosi. had a migraine at the thought country about who we are what is the humanity of america uh we wanted to support the small businesses they are the vitality of our economy the dreams that people have uh, the entrepreneurship the risk they're willing to take oh, you said a word kyle doesn't like entrepreneurship for an idea and so that's why we all gathered and wrote the ppp uh, for that so that we can try to reach as many people as possible uh, for their jobs and their businesses. And your problem with this is what, Kyle? Your problem with this is what? Because I know you don't fucking understand economics as well, uh, along with understanding not how to buy a fucking suit jacket. That was incredible because she was asked a question about wealth and income inequality, the two Americas, the fact that we have haves and have nots, and the haves are going to be all right. You know, they are they got plenty of savings. They're comfortable. They could weather the storm here. And then you have the people who can. So he's asking a pretty direct question about poverty. And her response, she starts with like the... Well, we're all in this together, and we'll discover America's humanity. Oh, will you get yeah. to the fucking point, you? She smug starts with son like that bitch. airy fairy nonsense of like unity and togetherness and lovely words like humanity, and and then what does she do? Immediately goes to small business and entrepreneurship. Hard word to say. Well, your butt buddy Bernie Sanders, who you love to suck the crusty, rusty dick of, would make it impossible to start a business because he taxed them to oblivion. Yeah, what's wrong with entrepreneurship? What's wrong with small business? You run one, dickhead. And I'm going to get to why you're in her damn fucking bubble. Entrepreneurship. You were asked a question about poverty in the two Americas, and you go into... Meanwhile, I would also like to bring up, Kyle, you fucking defended the fact that there are people that are getting paid more right now through unemployment to sit on their ass at home and not work rather than have their employer apply for the pay, uh, Paycheck Protection Program. Why the hell did they come up with that fucking tongue twister? Because there are employ there are employers that took the program and their employees were pissed because they were making more money on unemployment. And you, Mr. Jackass, think that's a good thing. Well, that's unsustainable, idiot. Small business and entrepreneurship? So nothing she doesn't mention poverty. She doesn't mention homelessness she doesn't mention workers she doesn't mention i don't think that was the question in no he was talking about people that have to go out to work versus the people that can stay home it wasn't about what the fuck do we do with the jackass already on the street oh by the way kyle even right now there's still about ten thousand resources that homeless person can access people are homeless goddamn near because they want to be the working class, it's immediate, you know. You're not in the working class, idiot. You're like the rich trust fund baby with a Che Guevara t-shirt on. Fetishization of entrepreneurship and small business. Now, just so everybody understands, I got nothing against small business, and I got nothing against entrepreneurship. 
Nothing against it at all. But when you're asked a question directly about poverty. No, she wasn't. Oh, my God. Whatever. Fuck it. We'll go with your definition. And working people and the haves and the have-nots in the two Americas. That's not a time to bring up entrepreneurship and small business. She was asked about workers. Not, oh my god, ugh. This is why I hate progressives. They can never just answer the question honestly or respond to it honestly. They have to twist the fucking thing around to fit their goddamn narrative. Yes. So what does this show you? You know... It shows to me that you're a, you're, you're a fucking weasel and you just twist your way out of anything. Putting aside her ideology, I really do think that she has totally bought into the framework of Reaganism. And the framework of Reaganism is the era of big government is over. Good. Government fucks everything all up, Kyle. Like, right now you have Trump as president. Do you want to give the government more power with Trump as president? Because you're going to get another four years of him. Or do you want to give a government that where Joe Biden, who's demented, has more power? And every time we have given the government more power, not less power, it's always ended badly. So why the fuck would we want to do that? Oh, I hate you, Kyle Kalinske. Of all the people on the fucking YouTube, I hate you, I hate you, I hate you, I hate you. And so we're... You know, I know fucking TJ wants to saunter on over and give you a hand job every goddamn five minutes, but you're not as smart as you think you are. You're a fucking idiot. You can't even buy a fucking suit properly. Oh, God. We're all, like she said, she famously said when she was asked a question in the town hall, we're all capitalists. We're all capitalists. We are. We all, we should be. But we all are. You know, the Democratic Socialists of America are selling swag. Very socialist. And I guarantee you, if I made knockoffs of them, I'd get a cease and desist, uh, I'd get a cease and desist order. So the era of big government is over. We're all capitalists. And so this is why, guys, when she's asked a direct question involving poverty, she can't bring up solutions to poverty. She wasn't asked a question, and you're always going to have poverty in a free society. The only way you can eradicate it is by making it a controlled outcome society, but that means we're all poor. Everyone that has ever been in a communist or socialist government has ended up far poorer and far worse off than even the lowest rung of poor in a capitalist society. A homeless person in America today has it better than probably 60% of the goddamn world. Oh, my volume's lower? That uh, exact that's same... I, that's what I get... For, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put Kyle down then. Whoops. Question that he just asked. Like, how are we gonna make it so that you know, that we don't have the haves and the have-nots. We don't have the two Americas. Like, what are we going to do to fix this? You know what somebody with their head on straight says who actually cares about solutions to these problems? We're going to do universal basic... No, he didn't, he didn't fucking say that, Kyle. He said, what are you going to do for people that have to get out and go to work every goddamn day? That's what he said, you fucking retard. And I know, and he, and he started it. I'll tell you why UBI is bad. Problems? We're going to do universal basic income, and we're going to do Medicare for all. Oh, great. The government can't run the DMV right. I'm not going to trust them to run my medical. Further, we do UBI. Okay? Then if a bunch of people get a UBI and they have no desire to work, then how are eggs made? You know, you seem to think... That if we just gave people money, everything would be awesome. But that's not how it works. That's why I said, 
if robots take 99% of the jobs, then we got to talk about a UBI. Or if we start living in a Star Trek, like, replicator world, then we got to talk about a UBI. But, Kyle, I know you're a fucking idiot, and you can't think fucking five steps, but eggs do not magically appear in a grocery store shelf, nor do they have a field out back with the chicken. This is why money is important and why capitalism works. The farmer has to pay someone to get the eggs because he can't do it all on his own. And no, organic hippie co-op farms won't produce enough food to feed all of us. So we have to go with factory farming. It's the only way we all eat. So he has to pay somebody to collect the eggs. Now, either A, if the UBI, which I'm assuming he wants the $2,000 a month, which is roughly $500 a week, if he if, if the pay is anywhere near that to pick the eggs, he's not going to get anyone to do it. Okay? They're just going to stay home. So he's going to have to pay more. You know, and then that's going to cause the price of the eggs to go up. Then after they're picked, they got to be put in cartons. There's somebody there. You got to have somebody uh, drive them from the truck or maybe load them on the truck or have the truck drive them to, you know, where the fuck ever. Then another truck to bring them to the grocery store warehouse. Then another truck to take them from the warehouse to finally the store. There's probably 20 people that have finger-fucked that carton of eggs before it gets to the store. If you bring in a UBI, you do one of two things. Either the supply chain breaks down and nobody has eggs, or B, you inflate the currency to where the fucking UBI is meaningless. Or you raise taxes to the point that it's meaningless. And yeah, losing 5 million jobs or 20 million jobs because of the public taking over health care, that's not going to happen, you fucking idiot. Could you imagine? Put aside all of her terrible platitudes and we're all in this together and I love humanity. Yeah, also, Mr. Jackass, I'm going to have a real big point for you in a minute. Yeah. Um, put that aside. Put aside that, put... You know, of all the people that I seriously do, no bullshit here, I seriously do want to, like, meet in an MMA fight or a boxing match, it's this smug son of a bitch. Decide. I don't give a fuck if he is, like, six foot six and is a foot taller than me and outweighs me by fucking 20 pounds. I don't care. I just want a shot to punch him right in the fucking face. Small business and entrepreneurship. What percentage of the country own a small business or are entrepreneurs a good chunk you and me both technically are i make money off of this so technically it's a business you make money off of your show it is a business anyone who self-publishes books is an entrepreneur the internet has made it incredibly easy to be an entrepreneur entrepreneurs are not donald trump idiot I guarantee you there are way more working people, working people who can't pay the bills during this crisis. Imagine. Yeah. And that's what the PPP program was designed to help those people. And a direct answer to the question where. Also, if Bernie Sanders got in, why the fuck would anyone start a business? You're asked about the two Americas. You're asked about poverty, the haves, the haves, nots. And you say, well, what we're going to do in this crisis is implement Medicare for all so people don't have to worry about medical bills. Great. So healthcare will be rationed. It'll be shittier. Uh, it'll be slower because it is everywhere that has this. Italy's ready to just crumble because they have this. Um, and no, if you go to the emergency room, they treat you whether you can pay or not. So we already have it. Also... Medicare and Medicaid are the biggest line items in the budget right now. 
Also, where the fuck are we going to get the $5.4 trillion a, ne- a year we're going to need to pay for this? By the way, Andrew Yang's dividend, I did the math, I believe it's $2.5 trillion. Where are we going to get the money for that? Because our entire GDP is $20 trillion. We're at about 70% of it. I mean, Kyle, you, you understand how a balance sheet works. I assume you're not filming this in your fucking mother's basement, right? Right? They don't have to go bankrupt worrying about medical bills. And we're going to do a UBI because if you do UBI, then everybody's assured to have a floor. And the floor... Then why would they work? Why would anyone work? Is a reasonable floor where... You're not going to lose everything as a result of this crisis. Okay, then nobody's going to work. Nobody will work. And then everything will break down. Or they will start doing hippy-dippy dipshit jobs. Where, oh, I will be an artist. But they won't treat the they won't treat their paintings like they should. You're just going to collapse everything. And how the fuck are we going to pay for it? You do know money only has, money is not valuable by itself. It's just a trade medium. I mean, if you only, if you only have the only toilet paper plant that's working in the country, suddenly your toilet paper is more valuable than fucking gold. Okay, money is just a medium so we don't have to dick around with the barter system. It's kind of a barter system. But instead of lugging everything we own, you know, it's, it's just a trade medium. On top of that, we're going to do a rent freeze. We're going to do a mortgage freeze. Oh, you're going to do a property tax freeze? Because you do know that the landlord still has... To, are you going to freeze the landlord's bill? Like property taxes, maintenance, all the other staff he's got to pay to run the properties. You do know that when somebody pays their landlord $700, let's say, a month for rent, he doesn't just pocket it. Okay, about 620 bucks goes into running his property. We're going to do hazard pay. So these workers on the front line that you're talking about, the people who don't have the ability to just be at home with their computers and quarantine with their families, those people, they're going to get hazard pay. So they get paid either time and a half or double time so that we reward them for their bravery and being on the front line during this crisis. That's how you answer that question. But that's how you answer that question. Oh, great. And how is the business supposed to afford that? Just not for nothing. If you actually give a damn about the have not. Now, my company's giving me extra money because I'm technically essential and front line. But, you know, and Kyle, you're you're in her tribe. You're one of the assholes who can look down at the people demanding their government reopen their jobs for them because your job is working at home or in your mother's basement. But I'm assuming it's your home. Your job is a one man fucking crew. And and that's it. Uh. If you actually care about the working class To her, I don't know when the last time Nancy Pelosi brought up homelessness or poverty is I have no idea I have no idea Well, let's see When we have an empty shelter And the homeless people refuse to go in it They'd rather sleep on the beach and just get high What the fuck do you want her to do about it? And thanks to people like her and you, San Francisco smells like a fucking open sewer. Because to her, the fetishization is of the entrepreneurs and the small business owners. And to her, those are as low as the constituents go. Those are the ones I see. No, that's why she brought up the payment. Oh, my God. Yeah, the Paycheck Protection Act, or whatever, PPP, that's going to small business owners, not the people the small business fucking employs. Also, do you know what determines what is a small business and what is a large business? 
I guarantee you, you don't. Those are the ones I'll fight for. Those are the ones I'll work for. I'll work for the big donors, the, the corporate donors and the owners and the executives. I'll work for them because I always work for them. And then also small business people. and Because you would be shocked, shocked what is considered a small business. Believe it or not, Circuit City for much of the 90s was considered a small business entrepreneurs and so that's what this is geared towards that's what the response has been geared towards you know the lo the lowest rung in you know you you already have a problem Kyle an unsustainable problem of people making a living off of goddamn welfare it goes to is the small business and the entrepreneurs but they don't care about workers they don't care about work oh my god did you even bother to hear the program's name you fucking retard because that's why they haven't passed hazard pay they don't care about the have-nots, the homeless people, poor people. That's why there's no UBI. They don't care about, um, you know. Uh, the poor people have their own UBI. It's called welfare, jackass. God, you smug, 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 smug motherfucker. You know, the medical crisis. All right, I'm going to move on to a different video of his. We got about 19 minutes left. And okay, we're gonna do uh, we're gonna do this one here. Um, can you just fucking get to it? I gotta give you another story. All right, and this will probably be the last uh, video of the day. Again, if you're listening on audio, um, again, I, Kyle doesn't usually use a lot of graphs, so you can kind of get the story. But again, you can always watch this live. I'm going to pick a time where this will be every day. And uh, you can watch me live, youtube.com slash Lord of Patriarchy. But some of these streams might be for patrons only. Patron.com slash Dave Nordahl. And they'll be available at the $1 level. And uh, if you watch the live broadcast, uh, I think I am going to do a Q&A at the end of this. Uh, I'll see what's in the chat. Uh, but that won't be for the, uh, unfortunately, podcast listeners. You won't get to see that. So. Story on how lame the Democrats are. This one, I, I couldn't not cover this. Senate Minority Leader Charles Schumer is planning to introduce legislation that would prevent Trump from placing his name on any additional coronavirus stimulus checks. The proposal, dubbed the No- who fucking cares if Donald Trump's name is on the goddamn check? It's because I think Schumer knows, I think New York's pissed with him. The country doesn't like him. And he knows Trump's going to probably win and the Republicans will probably gain more in the Senate. No Politics in Pandemic Recovery Act or no PR Act would prohibit taxpayer money from being used for any promotional activity, including Trump or Vice President Pence's name, likeness, or signature. Schumer is pushing for the provision to go in the next coronavirus stimulus package, Politico reported. Trump, unfortunately, appears to see the pandemic as just another opportunity to promote his own political interests, Schumer said. In oh, for Christ's sakes, you people have done the same thing. In a statement to The Hill, the No PR Act puts an end to the president president's exploitation of taxpayer money for promotional material that only benefits his re-election campaign. The move... How? How does it benefit his campaign? How, Kyle? And again, the Democrats have politicized this. Also, Schumer and Pelosi were the ones that it took so long for this shit to get done. From the New York Democrat follows the Treasury Department's decision to order Trump's name to be printed on the $1,200 stimulus checks going to millions of Americans impacted by the outbreak of the novel coronavirus. The checks are one of the products of the $2.2 trillion relief package Congress approved in March. Okay, so Trump's original idea to put his name on, on the checks, call it what it is, that's evil genius. That is him saying, oh, I got an idea. Let me do something that is guaranteed to help me for my reelection, which is put my... Uh, Trump already sealed his reelection victory, most likely, with A, 
them picking Biden. B, um, his coronavirus response. And C, the fact that by November, this will mostly all be over. My name on the checks that... You're not going to be able to cancel the election, and we're not going to have mail-in ballots. We're not going to do this by the mail. We're going to go to the fucking polling place. The Democrats have nowhere near the votes to get it through the Senate. They have nowhere near to overrule him in the House. And Trump will just veto the fucker. It's $1,200 to a lot of Americans. And so when they see it, they will, they'll think, regardless of the reality and what happened behind the scenes, they're all just going to say, oh, that's, I give credit to Trump for it. Why? Well, his name's on the check. What do you, duh, of course I'm going to give credit to the guy whose name is on the check. Why wouldn't I? So it's a political move that is obviously clearly designed for political gain, but, you know, a politician gearing something toward Schumer shot, Schumer shot himself in the foot. With the fucking impeachment thing. It's political gain. I file under www.duh.org. That's what that is. So I'm not, like, I'm not outraged by it. I'm not offended by it. I look at it and I'm like, okay. He found a way to, you know, twist this in his favor, which he's going to do regardless. But he did it in a way that's more concrete. Now, I guess you could fear monger like, uh, like Schumer's doing here about... Oh, God, Mr. President, the cost to the taxpayers. But really, I mean, I don't think it costs that much to taxpayers to put the names on the checks. Um, and I just don't think that's like a convincing line of attack. So why is it so lame what, what Chuck Schumer is doing here? And I'll explain why. Because instead of, instead of Chuck Schumer and the Democrats going, Oh, okay, so you want to go down this road. You want to play this game. You want to be this political. Game on. Instead of them proposing a bill and doing something that benefits them just as much, if not more. So in other words, okay, you're a politician, you're playing politics. Bet. I'm a politician too. So get ready. Instead of doing that, what does he do? He tries to, he's not playing offense and he's not playing on actually doing anything for the American people. So he plays defense. And the defense is, oh, Mr. President, you got to stop putting your name on the checks out good. Yeah. Well, Kyle, from all I've heard from you, uh, we the whole country would be bankrupt in about 10 minutes. What do you want Schumer to do? What, what do you want him to do? He knows the Democrats are fucked. Pelosi knows they're fucked. She knew, she had to know the second she bent the knee and did, decided to move with him for impeachment because of the visibility of the squad, she knew she was fucked. Right now, they're just trying to minimize the damage they've caused. Schumer had to know goddamn well Pelosi holding it up was a bad move. You know, generally, the stimulus bills that have gotten passed are pretty much what Trump wanted. He's had to bend a little bit on a few things, but they're pretty much what Trump has proposed. You guys are losers. Dude, just propose a UBI. You know, like, have the Democrats in the House. Oh, my God. How the fuck? Oh, my God. Kyle, you are never going to get this fucking UBI, you retard. Okay? Nobody's going to work at McDonald's if there's a UBI. Also, the Green New Deal, the closest you got to some shit like this, got laughed out of the Senate. Was there one vote in the affirm? Oh, that's right. No, there wasn't. How well do you think this is going to do? Obviously, Chuck Schumer's in the Senate. But why not have Nancy Pelosi pass a clean bill that's just a UBI? Or, I'm sorry, let's do UBI rent freeze and hazard pay in one bill. Guys. Again, are you planning to freeze the landlord's expense? 
Like, I don't get this. How How is it that Kyle Kalinske gets praised as being a fucking intellectual, yet he has the same brain capacity as AOC? Guys, do you not understand that these ideas, these policies, poll, they're over- Oh my God. Oh, don't do it, Kyle. Don't fucking do it. God damn it, Kyle. Overwhelmingly, in the words of fucking Eric Cartman, shut up, Kyle. Shut your goddamn mouth. Be popular, especially in a time of crisis like right now. Oh my God, no, they don't. Do you know where they die, Kyle? Yeah, the idea is popular. Then go down to question three. Do you want your taxes raised? Then support drops to about twenty percent. Americans don't like paying taxes. You little retard. Okay? That's why you're never going to get your precious Medicare for fucking all. Support dies when Americans realize their taxes go through the roof. Obamacare was popular. Then Americans got the bill and they hated it. Jesus, tap dancing Christ and a kiss goodnight. People are struggling. They need help and they need it now. You're in a position to help. Good. Reopen the fucking economy. Let them go back to work. There's a solution. Now, Chuck would say and Nancy Pelosi would say, oh, but we don't know if the Republicans are going to let this through, even if we do the right thing. And by the way, they don't really want to do the right thing because they're corporatists themselves. But put that aside for a second. They would tell you, well, I don't know. If oh, great. And how are any of what Bernie Sanders proposed, how is that sustainable? How will that not bankrupt the country, crush the economy into powder, and leave us like Venezuela, where we have roving bands of people beating the cow to death, not because we're cruel, just because we're starving? You fucking smug jackass! If the Republicans would be okay with this. Okay. So break their damn back. Live on camera. That won't work, Kyle. Once Americans see 70% of their paycheck gone to taxes to pay for all this shit, they're just going to live off their goddamn UBI. Or is the UBI going to be taxed at 80%, in which case it's useless. You do know the government makes nothing. It makes no products. It makes no innovations. Governments, all the money government has comes from taxes. Okay? If NASA could take out patents on things, it'd be the richest organization in the world. Pass a bill through the House that's UBI, hazard pay for frontline workers, rent and mortgage freeze. Oh, great. And all, all Mitch McConnell would have to do it is, here's what it would cost. Here's what it would cost with this. Here's what it would cost with this. Here's the revenue we would lose because we can't collect property taxes from landlords anymore. We can't have them be charged for utilities because they're not getting in any income because this retard doesn't understand how business works, you fucking idiot. So... This is how much your tax bill is going to go up for every American. And then it dies. Right there. And the Democrats will lose the House. They're going to lose the Senate even further. And I guarantee you, the Democrats and you jackasses, keep this shit up, Kyle. You're not only going to lose 2020, you're going to lose 2024. Kyle, I hate to bring this up. You and your little circle jerk on Twitter and your progressive YouTube bubble are not fucking America, okay? America does not give two fucking shits about your far left progressive fucking crap, okay? America as a country is center right. And guess what, jackass on the political compass test? That little ball is creeping right. It is not creeping left. You live by the polls, but you don't even want to read the rest of the fucking polls. You cherry pick one goddamn poll that supports your fucking narrative, you smug, stupid, bad mustache having, bad goatee wearing jackass in your cheap fucking Walmart suit and your shitty fucking cold shirt. 
You sit there and you say, oh, this poll proves my point. When I take the same study and I can show you exactly where support for like a UBI or Medicare for all completely dies worse than fucking Dale Earnhardt Jr. did on a NASCAR track. Jesus, tap dancing fucking Christ, you stupid son of a bitch. I would actually pay 500 bucks to have a dominatrix kick your fucking balls through your goddamn throat. That's it. Pass that bill through the house right now. And then make a big stink about Trump blocking it. And the Republicans and Mitch McConnell blocking it. Like, they don't have to do that. They just have this thing called math on their side. This is why Bernie Sanders would have lost, you retard. Numbers don't lie. Numbers don't have politics. And numbers don't have feelings. They're just cold, hard, goddamn facts. They never... They never take the initiative to do the kind of stuff that Trump did here, where he's like, I'll put my name on the check because that'll help me. That'll make me look good. The Democrats never do that. Really? And what was Obamacare, you fucking retard? Oh, my God. Ugh. And that will be the podcast. <laughs> so if you miss an episode... Be sure to download it. It'll be available on iTunes and on Podbean. Uh, check me out here, uh, youtube.com slash Lord of Patriarchy. And because after a little bit before I do the podcast and a little bit after, I'm going to be doing a Q&A. Um, so if you'd like to check that out, uh, I am going to have a, a time that I do this starting the next episode. If you do follow me on the uh, YouTube, I'll have it in my community tab. But, um, yeah, that ends the first episode. I will see everyone later. And for everyone watching me here on YouTube, I will be right back. I have to take a restroom break, get some more water because my throat is fucking shot. And I will be back for a little bit of a Q&A. So get your questions in. Okay, Q and A time. Um, uh, blah 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 blah. What are my thoughts on Bill Hicks? Um, believe it or not, I, I um, I don't really know much about his comedy. Believe it or not. Um, did I hear Mercedes F1 team spent $5.4 billion on its operations over the last eight years? I did not hear that. Um, yeah, Kevin Rupert, I generally do get pissed off. Um, 
with Kyle Kalinske. He's such a smug son of a bitch that just drives me fucking nuts. Uh, a UBI should only be available for people who work. If you're on welfare, you get nothing. I tend to agree. I, I, I disagree a little bit. You should get nothing if you don't work, and you should get uh, nothing extra if you do work. I The the reason is is because I, I, a UBI would just devalue the currency. That's literally all it would do. Um, let's see. Are you ex are you an expanded universe for Star Wars or Star Trek? Uh, neither. I don't know. He probably does wear the same fucking suit jacket every goddamn video. It's just. I mean, at least Jank Uger changes it up a little bit. Who will run for 2024 for the Republican nomination? Um, I think, who do I want to run or who do I think will run? I think, um... I think one of Trump's kids will run, most likely Don Jr. I'd like, I'd love, 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 love Ivanka Trump to run and win. Because I want to see the feminist head explode at the paradox. They got their lady president, but it's Ivanka Trump. Um, I also think um, probably Rubio will run again. Cruz, maybe Trey Gowdy will run. That's an outside shot. Um, um, I don't think McConnell will run. Uh, maybe Jeb Bush. That, but I highly doubt it. Possibly Rand Paul. But I honestly think if one of Trump's kids run it, as, as much as I don't like that shit, I'm tired of the Bushes and the Clintons and all this legacy crap. But just for comedic purposes, I want Ivanka Trump to get it. Um... What are my thoughts on Undertaker 1127? I haven't seen, I haven't heard anything from him for years, so I have no idea what he's what he's doing. Uh, am I a James Bond guy? I've seen, I've seen a few of the flicks. I generally liked them. Uh, I remember playing GoldenEye for the N64 back in the day, but I couldn't tell you anything about it. Oh, I forgot. It might be Mike Pence. If if Pence runs after Trump, he's probably got the nomination. Um, do I think Disney World will go bankrupt? Uh, possibility, because Disney's hemorrhaging money at the moment. Do I think the Democratic Party might be dissolved because it's so fractured at this point? Um, I did. I would have. If you'd asked me this a couple of months ago, I would have said no. But, yeah, or it's going to be so fractured that they're never going to have power again. I don't know if Trey Gowdy can be on the Supreme Court. He, I don't think he was a judge. Uh, Trey Gowdy was a representative. Um, I am blanking on the state. South Carolina, I think. I could be dead. I could be dead fucking wrong on that. But he was a he was kind of a down the middle common sense guy that, you know, really he didn't ask gotcha questions. He just asked, like, this is the truth. What the hell are you yapping about? Uh, if they if they do divide into two parties, uh, Russell Hunter, the Democrats are never going to win again. 
They'll they'll win some representatives, they'll win some Senate seats, but they are never going to win the presidential nomination again. Or they're never going to win the presidency again. Um, Anita Sarkeesian ruined The Last of Us 2. I did hear... I don't know if they... Okay, I, I have not been following The Last of Us 2 controversy very closely because I didn't play The Last of Us 1. But apparently, either... I, I heard that they just watched her videos. But apparently, the protagonist of The Last of Us 2 is some transgender lady hellbent for revenge against the protagonist of the first game because, I don't know, he killed her dad or something. I don't know. It, it sounds retarded. You know, and, and here's the thing. Uh, apparently, The Last of Us, at least the, the, the DLC, did a lesbian relationship rather well. Uh, maybe the Republicans will try to get Ted Nugent to run in 2024. If they do that, they'll lose. Thoughts on the MGTOW lifestyle? Live your life any way you choose. Don't give a damn. Uh, I am a huge proponent of the Second Amendment myself. Favorite Star Wars video game? Mine is The Force Unleashed. Mine would have to be The Old Republic. The only one I'm not sure on is I kind of got sidetracked with Red Dead and I never finished uh, Fallen Order, so that's the only one that... But I don't think it'll be uh, Kotar. Is the Democrat Party a group of special interests that secretly hate each other? Um, no. I think it's a party of people that are moderate who want slightly bigger government programs. But at some point, they got infiltrated by a group of lunatic socialists that have the let's burn it all to the ground mentality. So... That's where I'm going to end this one for today. I will see everyone later. Last thing, uh, favorite energy drink is Mountain Dew Kickstart.